Hi, this is Jason Marquette for Dance Teacher Web, and today I'm going to do a short introduction on basic sliding. Uh, sliding is an art form in and of itself, uh, and it should be used as a rhythmic element, uh, not just for tricks. It's always about getting you to the next place. It's a transition. There's a really great documentary by Jimmy Slide. I always suggest people um, check out what he says about sliding. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, so we're going to talk about the basic physics of it, um, body placement, safety precautions, obviously, uh, as well as a couple of different types of slides, forward and backward. So starting with just understanding the physics of it. Um, obviously, if there's too much friction, we can't slide. So you need a slick floor, um, but not one that it's like ice, right? We don't, we don't want ice. We just want something that has a little bit of slip to it. Um, this floor is great. It, most days I can slide for days in here. And this is a good way to test it. All you have to do is stand on one leg, and if you can lean back just a little bit and let that foot go, almost like you're going to go into a split easily, then that's probably a decent sliding floor. So that's the first thing. The next thing you want to do is you want to get the kids comfortable with the idea of sliding. You want to get them feeling safe doing it. So the simplest way to do that is almost to have them run into a little bit. And on both feet, I mean, we've all done this in our socks on our wood floors at home, right? where we kind of take a little run and we just let it slide just a little bit. Now, things to think about. If we're directly on top of the leg, we can't slide. As we said, when we lean back a little bit and let that foot go, all of a sudden we can slide. So there's, getting, there's a comfort level that we have to achieve of just being slightly behind the leg. And again, another way to learn that is to just sort of like, almost like you're ice skating around a little bit, let, and figure out where you have to be then to get the feet back underneath you and not be sliding. So, first thing was, again, just ice skating. Figuring out where the body is and where the foot, where the body has to get over the foot in order to stop the slide. Once you have that, then you can kind of say, okay guys, we're just gonna run and we're gonna slide. So you're just gonna run and you're just gonna let your feet go. And it doesn't have to be a big slide, it's little bits at a time, right? So you got a nice little slide there. Getting them to slide on one foot, now that's a different story, right? Because that's a totally different level of comfort. And again, it's all about knowing where your body is. So you have to be willing to be behind it and over it and play in the middle of the slide, okay? But we always also want it to be rhythmic. So learning to slide is one thing, using the slide in choreography is a different thing. So we've learned to slide now. We're sitting slightly behind it. A great way to practice is just to slide, step back, slide, step back, slide, step back, slide to your corners. So it's small. Notice my body placement is a little behind the leg. It's not sliding crazy fast. It's just pushing through, but we're getting comfortable with it, okay? And then you can start to go a little bit further with it and you can allow them to right and just slide it out but again it's a comfort level so please don't push your kids too fast to do anything um, you can always damage the knees if they don't do it right uh, the next thing is a toe slide the toe slide is probably the most common one it's the one that people have been doing I think the longest um, and literally what you're doing is you're getting up over the toes leading with the knees and the pelvis and then landing on it so basically you'd be going step together <laughs> and sliding through. Now that is actually probably one of the easier slides to do, simply because all the kids have to do is be, be forward of their legs, push through, and land. So that's a good one to start with too, um, it, once they figure out that flat foot slide, so that they can find how far they can actually travel. And what they'll learn is that as they run, if they run and they get, you know, you do it across the floor, they can actually travel pretty far doing that one and feel safe. It's fun, but again, making sure that their feet are under them at the end, yeah? So, that's the toe slide. The next slide, and probably one of the harder ones, is the back slide. So, this one's a little hard, mostly just because the coordination is, is, is a little awkward. We have to stay up, and we have to push back, and we have to be up just on the ball of the foot as we go backwards. So, I, I also like to add a little sound to it. I'll let the foot release, almost like I'm doing a pullback, and then I'll slide. And that's even harder, so just actually pushing back, and sliding is not so bad, but then when you add that, that little hit in there, that gets a little bit more in there. And that, again, I like to have rhythms in everything I do. I like my slides to have a rhythm. So I'll slide and slide and cramp roll turn, and I'll go and one and two and three and go four. 
something to keep it within the context of the music of the song. So with that backslide, some things to think about as far as the coordination. You want to think about pulling up and back at the same time, right? You never want to lean forward as you're kicking back. Your feet will go out from under you and you'll face plant. So you want to make sure that you're pushing up and back at the same time. You want that oppositional force to keep you supported and up on your leg, right? Boom, yeah? You can step back and you kick this one through and up, yeah? So you want to keep, make sure you're thinking about that. The other thing is what your arms do. I always say to my students, if your arms aren't helping you, they're hurting you, yeah? They need to be somehow involved in the action. Are they going to do this? Or they're going to just be hanging? Or they're going to throw up? You want to make sure that they're doing something to help you. So if you notice, I'm doing like a running position in opposition. And what that does is it keeps me square in the movement, right? It doesn't allow me to twist in it, which is going to cause, which would cause your supporting leg to shoot out from underneath you as well. So always being conscious of, like I said, just that same basic core ballet technique of being strong in your center, keeping yourself squared off, oppositional forces providing support and stability through the movement and allowing the energy of the plie coming up as well as the legs shooting up, that's what's going to pull you back in that back slide. The rest of it, the forward slides are almost all simply about getting behind the leg but then being able to push forward to stop it. So there's a, there are some coordinations and some things to think about and to work through, but once you, as a teacher, figure that out for yourself, it's going to be much easier for you to explain it to your students. So I suggest you experiment with it a little bit on your own before you bring it into the classroom, just so that you're really, really confident and, um, and sure that you're going to make sure you're going to present it in a safe and fun way for your students. So good luck with that, and thank you very much.